Hello everyone, I'm Jose Delgado, I'm a corporate commercial attorney. Very interesting query that's been raised. Uh, basically, what is the position or what are the ramifications or what will transpire on the event of my partner, my spouse or a family member who owns a property jointly with me or alternatively in the event that I'm a beneficiary or an heir who is going to inherit a property, what happens if there's a mortgage on the property and also what happens with the property period. So let's tackle the first issue where there is a mortgage because that's what the question or the query is framed on specifically and um, it goes as follows. In the past, before the National Credit Act uh, came into play, rend uh, lending was quite, uh, not loose, but it wasn't as uh, onerous and uh, regulated as it is now under the National Credit Act. So in the past, uh, one party or both parties would qualify for mortgage, simple. Under the new dispensation and the National Credit Act, in the event that you jointly own a property with your spouse or partner, their demise may result in when you are transferring their portion into your estate or into your hands, that you would have to re-qualify for the bond. And what we find in many instances is that people cannot qualify for a bond on their own. So be very sure to revisit your position in the event that you have a long-term strategy for that property rather structure it correctly so that the demise of either one or both of you will not result in the persons who are going to be taking transfer of that property being in a position where they don't qualify for the mortgage which results in the property having to be sold. And then just to conclude on this particular point, what happens uh, on the event of uh, pass, a person passing away, there are capital gains taxes, there are executive